one more night or, you know, another night of city lighting, late night vlogging with McDonald's. Stop, don't judge me. That's me projecting. I judge me a little bit, but honestly, fuck it. McDonald's here is so good and it leaves me feeling much better than McDonald's does at home. And also I'm not gonna apologize for loving fast food. It's really good. It's why the US has a problem with obesity. It's not why, it's just part of why. Another full day in Shinjuku, and tomorrow's my last full day in Japan. Crazy. We'll do a wrap up. Not tonight. Okay, let's get this out because it's gonna be noisy. Oh, they don't call it a double quarter pounder here because they don't have pounds. So it's just a double cheeseburger, and damn, is it good. Like, look at that. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. It just, it just tastes so good so much lighter than at home. I know I keep saying that, but <laughs> but this napkin, ineffective. Wow, this lighting is terrible, but just deal with it for like one or two more days. Not a ton to talk about today. I sound better though, right? Woke up feeling better. I let myself sleep in a little bit and it was a shitty day out. It was really gross. It was pouring most of the day and I woke up craving like pancakes, like a Western breakfast, like diner, New York, bodega, IHOP, Denny's moment. And there are a few like Western breakfast places here, but in general, Japanese folks don't eat breakfast like out ever, which is why things open so late. And the only real things like have really consistent solid breakfasts are like hotel buffets. There are places that serve items, but like the local coffee shop, Tully's, their menu, the coffee shop, it's like Tully's Coffee is what it's called. They have like one thing that's like pancakes on the menu and the rest of the menu is like pasta with bolognese and hot dogs. What? And then like a sandwich with, it's, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Coffee shop culture here is very different. So I woke up craving that. Spoiler alert, it didn't happen. So I went to 7-Eleven, got some iced coffee and a couple little snacks to tide me over. And then I wanted to do some sort of like, well, I'll get to lunch in a second. I asked myself, I was like, what do I feel like doing? It's really shitty outside. What do I feel like doing? And you know what? I felt like sitting at my computer and getting some work done. And I was like, one part of me was like, you're in fucking Japan. Like you have a day and a half. You've, you know, less than three full days left. Like go out. And I was like, I want to do this right now. Why is that wrong? Like I've been here for nearly two weeks. I've seen so much. I'm still gonna have a whole day tomorrow. I have a lot of a day on Monday before I actually have to head to the airport. And so I let myself sit in the room for a bit and do work and catch up on some things. And that made me feel good too. And I was like, being on vacation and satisfying your impulses or your urges can look a lot of ways. And that's how mine looked today. And I was like, I'm not gonna guilt myself for that. So I didn't. So I worked for a bit, caught up on some things. And then I wanted to do some sort of like a steak, something or other for lunch, like steak on like a very sizzling plate with like a couple sides or like a set meal is a very common thing here. And I was gonna like walk out of my way to go to a place that was like, local or whatever, but across the street, there's a place called Pepper Lunch, which is a chain here and it's good. And I had this like massive steak. I took a picture, I can share it. It comes like not raw, but like kind of on this like very hot, you know what chilies when you go and you get the fajitas and you're like, don't touch, it's hot. Okay, it was like that times four because your steak literally finishes cooking in front of you. Like you turn it over with this pair of tongs. It was 300 grams of steak. I think it's like over a half pound. It was huge. It was like plenty enough. And then rice and some broccoli and some bean sprouts. And it's covered in this like butter. It, it was good. And like probably cost me like $8. It was insane. The prices here are ridiculous, especially on food, food especially. So then I came back to my hotel, got a little more work done, closed my eyes for a few minutes. And then I was going for a face massage with my friend Ellen, who I've mentioned. And it was 90 minutes. And I truly think it cost me like $35. And gratuities also are not a thing here. They like will not accept your tips. It freaked me out in the beginning and now I'm just kind of used to it, but I'm just like, oh my God. I mean, hopefully this is, you're being compensated justly because it's weird to like culturally not tip, especially after such a great service. I mean, this was the kind of face massage that's not meant to be like, they asked you like, what do you want? Do you want like relaxing? Do you want whatever? And I was like, no fucking get in there. I hold like so much shit in my jaw and like under here. I was like, go in, go in. And he did. He really did. I was like, this hurts in the best way. I didn't tell him to stop. But like 90 minutes, I was like, this is thorough. So I did that and then I came back and I showered and got into this regalia, which this shirt is brand new from Uniqlo here because again, Uniqlo is great and so inexpensive here. Went in to buy socks, left with 90 other things. I was actually meeting up with a friend named Alex tonight who I met in a restaurant in Kyoto. I was with the boys 
and we paid and we were leaving. And I struck up a very quick conversation with the woman behind us. And I just had this like instant connection with her. And then we left and we're about to walk out. And I told the boys, I was like, I'm so sorry, this is so crazy, but I'm gonna go back and see if she thinks it's the weirdest thing ever to give her my Instagram or whatever. And I walked in and I waited for her to finish paying and she like swooped around the corner and I was like, hi, it's me. Mm, we just met. Can I get your Instagram or do you mind if I give you mine? And she was like, oh my God, I was just paying. And I was thinking in my head, like I should have gotten his information. And I was like, well, I felt the same universal ping. So here you go. And turns out we were both gonna be in Shinjuku over the weekend and her hotel is like five minute walk. So I was meeting up with her. We went out, we got sushi for dinner. And then we explored this new like Kabuchiko, I think, I'm terrible with the names here. Towers, it's like huge entertainment complex that was literally recently finished less than a month ago. Really fun. I also took some B-roll from there. A very, very crowded like food hall on this first floor where we did not eat because it was so zany. And my social anxiety was like, woo! And then this like games floor sort of thing like Jillian's or Dave and Buster's. And then Gashapon, which is like those capsule toys that you like put coins in or put money and then you turn the thing and you get like, like we have them in grocery stores, you know, for like gumballs. It's a huge part of culture here. Just had a million of those machines. I took videos of all this. And then we sort of wandered around the red light district in Shinjuku, which is a time. There's definitely some folks like who are trying to scam a little bit there, but I was also like, you picked the wrong New Yorker to try and sell some garbage to because I've been training my whole life for this. And we just walked and we wandered. And there's this really fascinating part of Japanese culture that I did not know, where there are these bars called host bars. Now, I'm gonna explain to you what I know them as, and if I'm wrong, somebody please tell me in the comments or continue to educate me. The red light district in Shinjuku, there are certain streets where there are male hosts, and there are these host bars, and apparently you can go into these bars. Now, I'm not sure if they take non-Japanese folks, but you can go into these bars and pay men money for their company. Now, genuinely for their company, it really sounds like it's mostly like drinks and light flirting and sort of the adoration for the evening. Maybe some do more, I don't quite know. But I took video of this as well. There's like billboards for these boys, these men, men, very clearly men, like of age, with their like prices. It's really wild. I, I actually want to learn more about it because I'm like, how, what, like what culturally does this, I don't, someone tell me. And then we wandered, we grabbed some treats and then McDonald's and we parted ways. But she lives in Chicago, she and I went to the same college a few years apart, which is, is just wild. You know, it's like I've met several people here with whom I've had really lovely connections, who I also have some strange, something with, right? Some some interesting, I don't know. Like we share a little bit of similar music somewhere in our lives. And it's just been fascinating. So now I'm home. Absolutely not gonna finish this Big Mac because what was I thinking? Why is this video just so dark? I don't know. The lighting is also so curious because I'm using like one little baby light that's over there. I just looked directly into it. Oh my God, look at this Big Mac. Ooh, nice shot. That's like the money shot of the Big Mac. Mmm. The Big Mac sauce here is like a winner. Ding dong, darling. Mmm, so good. I also know I'm gonna get back to New York and like go right back to my lifestyle. Gym, eating, like back to it all. So that was today. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that happened today. I don't know. I have some major packing to do, some major reorganizing things since I went shopping. Yeah, I'm gonna finish this burger, get ready for bed and pass the fuck out. And tomorrow I have a head spa thing that I'm doing. I'm gonna try and check out Harajuku because I've not been there yet and have my last night, which is probably gonna be like dinner and drinks with Stefan and Alexi and maybe like going to a gay bar or something and seeing what that life is like. I made a video last night, right? I thought I went to the gay bar and watched RuPaul. Did I? I can't even remember at this point. It's been 24 hours out of my mind. And then the return trip home and I have to book a hotel room for Toronto. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm saying that out loud because I need to remember. Fuck. Okay, so I have some things to do, but it's great. As always, adore you. Like, follow, subscribe, all the things. You can check out additional content on Instagram and TikTok. And otherwise, a day and a half left. Let's bring this shit home. And then go home. And then bring some shit home. Just sounds. Bye!